Welcome to Only Murders in My Mind, a Random Thought production. Hi, I'm Carol Bissett, a crime writer, and I invite you with my co-presenters, Liz Hedgecock and Mike Jackson, each week to our conversations on all things murderous. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Only Murders in My Mind and with me as usual I have the marvellous Liz Hedgecock Hello. and the wonderful... <laughs> Hello Mike. <laughs> Mike Jackson. I'm not quite sure it's wonderful followed by giggles and laughter. <laughs> well you so complained much. didn't you before so... I, I'm always complaining. This is very true. The querulous yeah. Mike Jackson. Yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, he's, yeah, no. Good, he... good afternoon, Liz, and good afternoon, Carol. Oh, afternoon. thank you, thank you. Uh, before we start today, we, we've got a really good one today. Um, a couple of weeks ago, now we we did a podcast on a Hiku Horo, um, and we were staggered. <laughs> I think I can use that word at the views we got, and this was just on YouTube, and it's sort of hovering around now uh, 1,900 views, which mm. for our little podcast is like, wow, well, we're not quite sure why. I, we, we, we hope it's because it's good. Yeah. So <laughs> if anyone has any idea of why that particular episode seems to have gone a bit viral, then please let us know so we can do it again. Yay. And it's, if it's piqued your curiosity, it's mm. episode 26. So if you want to go and listen to it if you haven't done already mm. then you can be part of that growing number of people across the world oh yes to it. yeah and that that was the other thing we looked at some stats for i'm not very good with stats but we looked at some stats from spotify and it that shows you the world map and uh, our numbers of people listening abroad's growing we've got quite a following in the usa now mexico um in south america Papua New Guinea. I'm trying to think of where else. Well, we had some we had some lovely comments too on the uh, on YouTube. Oh yeah, um, we did. Yeah, which I think was it episode twenty six. That was yeah. That was that that, epi- that episode. Uh, we had somebody mm. from Mexico on there. Somebody from um, America, and I forget where the third. There was another one there. Was was from somewhere else within the world. So mm. we are just uh, worldwide. We are. Speaking of worldwide, actually, I don't know if anyone's come across it. I've started playing a little um, computer game called Global, and you have to try and guess the country. Oh. And you get more yeah. wrong. And I'm, I'm discovering how woeful my knowledge my of the world is because, you know, you'll, you'll pin it down to Central America and then you think, right, okay. <laughs> That's quite big. Yeah, Central America. Like, yeah, anyway, Eastern Europe even. Mm. I'm thinking, right, okay, so... Yes. It's next to this country, but it could be so many of them. Fail miserably at geography, I, I uh, hasten to add. So there we go. Yeah, the world got too big for me. I was all right when we did Great Britain. After that, it just sort of blew my mind. Well, it feels like it's changed a lot since mm, I was a yeah. kid as well. Yeah, countries that did exist don't, and mm. countries that don't exist do. And yeah. Yes. So anyway, we'd like to thank everybody for for that massive um, sort of uh, viewing rate, and we, yeah, it's we, been a super boost. Yes, so thank yes. you for listening to it, us. It, it made, made us very happy. Wow. Um, and what we're going to talk about today is unusual. And why is it unusual, Mike? It's because we're going today to talk about unusual unusual murder weapons that have been used in uh, science Ooh. fiction. And uh, we've been doing some research and have found some very very strange weapons or have been used to uh, dispose of people well mine mine are weapons that have been used to murder ordinary people but are unusual weapons oh so right. my, mine aren't science fiction so what what well, crime fiction i suppose it crime is. fiction yes. uh, and crime all fact or minor crime fiction yeah. right right ah, all right what? so go on mike well no don't hit us with one <laughs> Reveal your weapon. I think I think my the favourite one I've found so far is uh, from a Roald Dahl story. Now most people when they think of Roald Dahl think of all the children's books uh, that he's written. See, uh, I think Tales of the Unexpected yes, and the, the woman and the credits and the kind of the musical box tune. That's right, but I think yes. lots, of people, lots of people don't. You know, I think a lot of people don't realise that he did write some other very short macabre stories too, mm. and one of them was called A Lamb to the Slaughter. And in Lamb to the Slaughter, there's this 
apparently these the this couple she's pregnant uh, her husband is a police officer or retired police officer and um he comes home one day and says he's going to leave her and uh, she's cooking dinner at the time she gets really angry and when he turns his back on her she hits him on the head with a frozen leg of lamb that's going to hurt yes mm. uh, well, it did it did more than hurt it killed him mm. and so then she had to think well, how do i get around this um, so she thought the best thing to do would be to uh, cook the murder weapon. So there was no evidence. Uh, so she did. She cooked the leg of lamb. And when the investigating police officers came round to uh, to talk to her, um, she fed them the lamb <laughs> <laughs> and a glass of whiskey and uh, got away with the murder. Yeah. Yeah, I just, it just struck me as humorous as well, as well as slightly macabre. Yes. Mm. I mean, I'm I'm just going to say, if there are only two of them for dinner, how can they have a whole leg of lamb? Yes. Yeah, yes. Mm. Although maybe she was planning maybe shepherd's she was, pie. Yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe she was expecting <laughs> visitors. <laughs> ah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, well, I've got one here. Mm. Uh, and this was uh, this is a true life one. Uh, a man called Reginald Helmsley Dodgendale. In nineteen eighty, off the tongue. It yes. does. In 1988, <laughs> was killed with a pumpernickel bread. Roll. It must have been quite a hefty one. Uh, I think that was in America. It would have to be in America. So what happened? I mean, the, the, did they throw it at him? No, or? it was clouted on the back of the head with it, I think. But it must have had a brick in it I or something. Say, it must have been a big roll. Pumpernickel. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe like it a... was overbaked. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, isn't yeah. pumpernickel quite a hard bread? Yes, yes, yes yeah. it is. Yeah, but yeah. even so, I was thinking... That t- that takes some doing, doesn't it? Killing somebody with a loaf of bread mm. that, that, that isn't choking them, you know. You know, eat this. It's horrible. I choked. Mm. Yeah. Have you got any, Liz? Oh, I was thinking. I mean, um, an example, and this is not so much from a crime story. It's a kind of a um, something I've seen going around on Facebook. That that classic thing of um, you know, someone invites um, friend round for you know for drinks or whatever, and you know they have drinks together, hot day. And um, the host has five drinks and she's absolutely fine. Her guest has a drink and keels over. They're having it out of the same jug of punch. How come the guest dies and the host doesn't? Give in. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hot day. Oh, right. Give Very in. hot day. <laughs> this so is trying to get the host to use my has brain. had lots of drinks. Dehydrated? The guest only had one drink. So the guest was taking longer to drink her drink on this hot day. What might have happened? Because if it's a hot day, what might you do with your drink? Put ice in it. Yeah. And the poison's in the ice. Oh. Yeah. It's funny, actually, because uh, when I uh, used to talk about travel vaccines, um, we used to get a lady who used to come and talk about how to stay safe when you go abroad. And one Mm -hmm. of the things was don't put ice in your drinks in some countries. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because the water isn't. The water, just yeah. because it's, you know, don't drink the water, but the ice is okay. It isn't. <laughs> it's still water. Mm. So um, another possible unusual means of murder, and this one came to mind, um, would be a bell pull. Yes. Yes. Um, anyone acquainted with the Sherlock Holmes story, The Speckled Band? That's yes. right, that's where the snake comes down the bell pull, isn't mm, it? Yeah. Yes, because Sherlock Holmes looks at the bell pull and thinks, hang on a minute, that's not real, it doesn't go anywhere. It's just attached to the ceiling. So it was so just a ladder for the snake. Bell, it basically was, <laughs> yeah. I, and when you think and about trained it, the snake. How, how a, a story like that mm. is copied or adapted in many ways because i think of i can't think of which james bond but i'm sure there's been a james bond before where with a snake coming with a in. snake coming down on a piece of piece of string from the ceiling somebody's yeah you know taking away the loft or something hatch and uh, yeah a snake's been dropped down on a piece of string oh the one yes. the one i remember from james bond was the big spide <laughs> <laughs> crawling across his chest and i think it was um like a banana spider i don't think they're actually that poisonous but what's a banana spider like it's huge and hairy Ugh. like a tarantula Ugh. i think that's the other name for it Talk, talking of james bond uh, yes. there's also goldfinger yeah where mm. she was murdered by being painted in gold, gold yes. into toe which stopped apparently stopped the 
yeah. the body from breathing. Yeah. I think so what I remember is, so long as you leave a bit at the base of the spine, I think it is. Yeah. That was okay. the same if the whole lot gets covered. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's stop, it stops you sweating and um, you get sort of toxic. I think that's that's the whole mm-hmm. um, idea. I know this because <clears throat> when my mum and dad emigrated to Australia on the, was it the £10? The £10 20... sister passage. Yeah. Oh, £10 were... bombs? Yeah. Ah. Uh, there was a little lad uh, who died because he couldn't perspire. Oh, no. And when they got into really hot water, you know, the hot areas going on the boat too. Ooh. Yeah. So I remember my mum saying, oh, you know, that little Johnny died because... He, he couldn't. Oh, no. He couldn't perspire. Well, obviously, his parents didn't know anything about it. It's very, yeah. very real yeah. thing. So, Gosh. yeah. So it's that same thing applies mm. if you cover somebody in in gold paint. In gold paint. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I, yeah I, so. I, I've got one here, and mm-hmm. this is something that we don't see anymore, and uh, that's a, a cane sword. A what? A, oh, it's, it's a sure cane with a sword in the middle. Oh right. Oh, yes. like a sword stick. Yeah. Like a sword ah stick. right. Yeah. Um and. You used you yeah, to see them would in, notice that. Yeah. If you were. Oh, the days have got. Well, I, I went Victorian to, era. I should yeah. Think. You would have had lots of. Cause most most gentlemen had a um, a walking yes. stick of, of some description. Have you ever been tempted to have a sword stick, Mike? No, I, I do. I do enjoy a walking stick. Not not because I need one, but I do enjoy walking with a walking stick. So I yeah. made my own walking stick. Ah. You whittled it out of a bigger walking stick, didn't you? I didn't actually whittle it. But... <laughs> take some time i imagine no i i went to a cane store in london that's very famous for its canes and its umbrellas oh i remember you going there yes Yes, the the lovely window yes and i I bought a mary poppins umbrella with a with a parrot handle and why am i not surprised (laughs) by this i'm just worried that you're now going to tell me and when i opened it up out came this sword (laughs) well i asked and then the parrot bit me i asked him about cane swords and he said uh you can't sell them anymore because obviously it's a a deadly weapon yes he says i have got some in the back if you'd like to look at some though and i was like no i better not (laughs) is that the same as uh, would you want to come upstairs and see my etchings it could be So why do you think we're drawn to unusual weapons? What stick? Why do they stick in the mind in the way that they do? I, I think it, it's a bit like you getting us tried to guess about that ice. Mm. It leaves you wondering and you, and you can't for the life of you work out how it, how happened. it was done. Uh, yes. Which is what it, it's all about, murder, mystery and crime. Yeah. It's trying to work out. You, yes. you, you, you almost want to be one step ahead of the uh, the detective, whether it's Poirot or Sherlock Holmes. Yes. I'm so thinking, when they had, when yeah. they sort of pointed out, you think, oh, yes, that's clever. Mm. That's obvious. I was going to say one of the things that really um, irritates me when I watch films and um, television programmes mm. is when they, they have a needle and they inject it into the neck and the person just drops like that. Well, first of all, <laughs> if that would only happen if you got it into the bloodstream. So you need to get it into the carotid uh, So you'd have to be very accurate you with your yeah. random plunge. Or when they, they inject into the arm and the person mm. collapses straight away. I've tried to get blood out of people that were moving. And believe me, it's not easy. Mm. So it, it isn't, they make that look really simple. Yeah. Yes. And it, it's not Mm. One, of, one, of the, one of the other ones that I found which quite uh, intrigued me was it's a historical mystery um, I've not I've not read this it's called The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco yes, mm. yes. oh I've read that yes, yes. And it's, it's a cracker yeah poisoned manuscript pages mm. oh the, pa- the pages are poisoned and what most people do is tend to lick their fingers Yes. To turn the page over, and as they're licking their fingers, so they're getting the and poison. And it's a very old book as and well, so book. it probably does have thick, dry pages right. that you would have. Oh, oh, yes. Clever. I thought that was very oh. clever, yes. Yes. And something oh. like that sneaked into one of your boots, didn't it? Something similar. Oh, yes, indeed. Yeah. Is yes. that where you got the idea from? Or was it, it? it was. And I do oh. reference the name of the rose yes. in there because yes. I never realized when it's that. discovered, one of the characters says, Oh, it's just like in that film. And then it's, it happens on Fee's book and she'll hold the name of the rose. And he goes, Have you got a copy? And, you know, I think he also said, I didn't know it was a book as well. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. yes, with Sean Connery as uh, yes. William of Baskerville, the monk. Yes. Mm, no. No, sorry. Yeah, that's that's the film. Oh, it's the film of no, the name of the rose. Yes, yeah. it, was, it was very good. Um, 
my daughter has inherited a uh, poison ring, um, which I know isn't isn't the actual method. But it's the method of getting the poison into the drink yes. or something. Yeah. And it, yeah, it just there's just a little thing at the back, and you push it, and it clicks open. And you can drop the poison or the tablet in, and then all, and then all you have to do is put it on your knee and press it, and it closes again. And you know who would notice oh. that? Yeah, so. well, you just think it was a cocktail ring or yeah, something, wouldn't yeah. you? Wow. So that are you what... ever worried about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I know you get on very well. But... We do get on well. Yes, yeah. And mm. I, I notice if she was wearing it, she's not a ring person. Yeah. She doesn't wear many rings. So if she was wearing that, I'd go, "Can you take that off before we go out for cocktails, please, yeah. darling?" So going back to the Jane Bond thing, mm. why you know why do you think the unusual weapons and the gadgets and all of the you know the stuff with Q? Why is that such a thing? I think partly because it's unbelievable. You know, when when mm. you're watching James Bond, you know that none of the car chases or the weird gadgets um, actually exist. It mm. just adds to that sort of taking you out of the present and into mm. another world, which is not uh, not real. Yeah, I think it's also making you a promise. You know, if Q gives James Bond some bizarre gadget, you know darn well that is going to get used yes. later in yeah. the film. You've got to think about that. How on earth, you know, with the clicky pen or whatever, or, yeah. you know, the disappearing car. Yeah, yeah and the, 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 the uh, grot thing in his watch. Oh, yes. Yeah, it comes out of his watch. Yeah. Yes. yes. And, and usually James Bond is turning to these uh, implements when most other people would have been dead. You know, he's, he's been <sighs> struggling for 20 minutes and suddenly remembers that he's got um, a poison tip in his uh, in his ring or something. Mm. The laser nearly cut him in half, though, didn't They're it? Lazy, yes. Is yes. that Goldfinger as well? I don't know, but it uh, it looked very painful. Yes, mm. it just, got, did. just got out of that in time, didn't it? I mm. think sometimes, too, I've been mean, going on to the more gory I remember watching Killing Eve, which is a, a very gory. Um, yes, it series. is. Yes, and some of the weapons that she—I'm sure there was one where she just pulled a um, sort of not so much a knife, something out of her hair, something that was keeping her hair up. Oh yeah. Sharp, yeah, kind of a, a big sharp hat pin type. Hat pin yes, type. it was. Yeah, and, and yes. stuck it in this guy's eye. Mm. Uh, that would work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yes, but, but with that, it's the suddenness of it happening. Yeah. Something quite innocuous, yeah. like a hair hair hat pin, just comes out of her hair mm. and is in somebody's eye within seconds, mm. and yeah. it just shocks you yeah. as yeah. it's meant to. I wonder That's how the many thing. You know, Victorians many... carrying these deadly weapons, yeah. just keeping their hats on. I wonder how many women use them in self defence. Mm. You know, when they when they were common, you'd wear. I think the suffragettes two th- probably did. Yeah, two or yeah. three in your hat, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, thing. definitely. Yeah, and I mean, no one could take you up on it, could they? No. Yeah. So yes, Mike, you're shuffling some paper. No, I mean, I'm just looking to. I mean, I did some research about these. Ah. And another one. I've, I've not seen this. It's a remake of Black Christmas. Ooh, don't um, know that made one. Made in 2006, and the killer sharpens a candy cane. Is what the Americans Ooh. had at Christmas. Oh yeah, the yeah, the, not quite death by chocolate. No, no. no. death uh, by candy. One of, stab, stab a security guard. One oh. of one of the um, uh, things I saw once that stayed with me ever since because it, it was absolutely shocking at the time mm. was um, uh, a couple were uh, romancing in front of the fire, and then uh, she romancing. Turned, yes, <laughs> she turned her head away, and when she turned back, she oh, had no. razor blades in her teeth. Oh, you watch him lovely. Films. She cut his throat. <gasps> you know, and I was like, <gasps> and it's it always stayed with me because it was really because they, they seem to be so in love. Unexpected. <laughs> yeah. So you where know, did they come from? That came from um were the razor blades. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah, she had them secreted in her clothes oh. that were oh, at the I side see. of yes. her. Yeah. Okay. But mm. she planned it all, you know. Well you'd have to. I mean, you wouldn't normally have razor blades right. in your kit, would you? I mean, and then I was thinking, she's going to cut her tongue. I mean, does it really matter? <laughs> <sighs> well, I think it would matter. I think that would hurt like Billy oh, yeah. recently, oh. but there we go. But um, going back to the um, the Q thing, yeah, um, I had to go at writing my own kind of Q scene, um, as in James Bond Q, um, because um, in the Maisie Frobisher books, uh, one of my characters is going into a, what we might call a tricky situation, um, is Maisie. Um, and Mrs. Carter, who's kind of like a mentor to her, um, basically, you know, 
says, have you have you got anything to look at, you know, to, to defend yourself with? Um, and they go through a bit of a scene. So I'll read a bit from it. I do have the gun which Lord Montgomery gave me, ventured Maisie. Mrs Carter stared at her, then dissolved into peals of laughter. My dear, you can't possibly go into that house with a gun. What if someone finds it? You might as well announce that you don't trust your host, unless you'd rather he thought you were planning to shoot him. Better this way. She put a reticule into Maisie's hands. Unpack it, please. Maisie delved into the reticule and brought out a small pouch. Inside was a sewing kit, needles threaded with fine silk, a card of pins and a tiny pair of scissors. I'm really not sure. I find a jab with a needle or a pin can work once in a tight spot, said Mrs Carter. The pins are fairly harmless. The needle with yellow thread, however, has been dipped in a muscle relaxant. It will have an effect within a few minutes, and providing you're in a one-on-one situation, you should be able to escape. The needle with red thread, she looked at Maisie, don't use that one unless you absolutely have to. It is poisonous. And if you need something more straightforward, the scissors are deadly sharp. I see, said Maisie, closing the pouch hastily and returning it to the reticule. Next, she pulled out a small lidded cylinder. Should I open it? she asked, looking at it doubtfully. Mrs Carter laughed. Don't worry, the worst you will get from that is a sneezing fit since it contains pepper. Useful for seasoning food, but also handy for throwing into an adversary's face and particularly the eyes. That will buy you at least an extra minute. Maisie put it back and drew out a pen. What does this do? Well, it writes, said Mrs Carter, but it does so in invisible ink. Easy to write a letter and include a private message between the lines or in the margins. Obviously, you'll need to carry a normal pen as well. Finally, Maisie extracted a small pack of hairpins. I assume these aren't to keep my hair tidy. Mrs Carter regarded her critically. You do have several stray wisps, Miss Frobisher, which would certainly annoy me. However, these are for picking lots. But I don't know how to. Which is one of the reasons why I invited you to call on me, said Mrs Carter. I shall ask Avic to fetch some locks of standard make and more hairpins and we shall see how you get on. After that, we shall move to hands-on self-defence. Maisie eyed her hostess's plump form. Oh, but I couldn't. Mrs Carter giggled. Not on me, you goose. No, I shall demonstrate on Avic and then you may have a go. Don't worry, we won't hurt him. A tap at the door signalled the entry of Avic with a tea tray. We shan't hurt you, Avic, shall we? I doubt it, madam, said Avic gravely. And in return, I shall not hurt either of you. Agreed, said Mrs Carter. Now, if you could bring us those locks and a packet of pins, we shall begin our first lesson. <laughs> I, I keep saying, do you know you can get um, lock picking kits on Amazon? Really? I'm not surprised. No. I'm going to put that on my wish list for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, as you know, I, I, I like to play around with um, AI. So <laughs> I thought, I wonder what uh, ChatGPT would make of me asking for some unusual weapons that could be used in future stories. Mm-hmm. Unusual murder weapons that could be used in future stories. And these are just some of the ones it came out with. You can tell me which one you like best. A lethal virtual reality headset that induces fatal seizures or heart attacks through specific visual patterns. Ooh. Um, Oh, we, I think we like that one. Yeah. A killer swarm of drones that suffocate the victim by forming an airtight seal around his head. Oh, that's um, grim. A poisoned temporary tattoo, which is laced with a substance that's absorbed through the skin. Uh, Yikes. Dead, deadly noise can- cancelling headphones that emit a harmful frequency when activated. That's where I thought the virtual reality headset was going mm. to go, actually. Yeah. yeah. I like this one. A killer karaoke machine, <laughs> which releases toxic gas when a specific song is sung. Well, ah. it, what, one that it obviously doesn't like. <laughs> uh, if you murder a tune, it'll murder you. Murder on the dance floor. <laughs> killer robot vacuum. <laughs> The Roomba of Doom. A cleaning <laughs> robot that releases a toxic gas while operating. And then cleans up afterwards. Murderous food delivery drone. A drone that tampers with food en route, adding lethal substances. How would it do that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, that's, just that's, that's for us to, us to... You might have to ask AI about yeah. that. Yes. Or a killer keyboard. A computer keyboard that releases a contact poison on frequently used keys. 
So I took one of those. Do Don't one. hit that E. I took yeah. the uh, poison temporary tattoo. Oh, nice. Right. This is called The Last Impression. Mia beamed as she admired the intricate dragon t- tattoo on her forearm. It's gorgeous, Zack. I can't believe you designed this yourself. Zack grinned, his eyes glinting behind thick rimmed glasses. Anything for my favourite customer? It's a special ink too. Lasts longer than regular temp tattoos. As Mia left the pop-up booth, Zack's smile faded. He glanced at his phone, a text from an unknown caller. Is it done? Yes, he typed back, hand trembling. Three days later, Mia's roommate find, found her unconscious. By the time the ambulance arrived, she was gone. The coroner was baffled. Healthy 25-year-olds don't just die. Detective Inspector Sarah Chen stared at the vivid dragon, dragon tattoo on the victim's arm. Something nagged at her. The tattoo was too perfect, too fresh for a three-day old temporary design. Chen's investigation led her to Sack's booth now abandoned. His landlord mentioned he'd left town suddenly. Chen dug deeper, uncovering a trail of mysterious deaths across the country, each victim support, sporting a stunning temporary tattoo. Miles away in a dingy motel room, Zack received another text. New target, Liverpool, blue butterfly design. He began mixing his specialised ink, adding a clear, odourless liquid. The poison was undetectable, absorbed slowly through the skin, leaving no trace. Sack paused, studying his reflection. He touched the small tattoo behind his ear, the mark of the shadowy organisation that had recruited him. They'd promised him so much, he hadn't known the cost would be his soul. As he packed his supplies, Sack wondered how long before the police caught up with him. Part of him hoped it would be soon. Now you, that, you'd have to wear gloves, wouldn't you, when you're handling that? You, yeah, well, you, 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 you do when you. I, mm. I saw. I think I've, I've said this before, and I apologise for people that have heard this before. But I watched a detective series once where it was um, a bike gang who um, all wanted the same bike gang tattoo done. Mm. So a member of the gang was a tattoo artist. Only the they had been responsible for his boyfriend's death. And he inked them all with um, uh, the, some of his blood that was um, infected. Oh, nice. And the whole gang died gradually, one by one. Ooh. I have to say, Carol, you watch some lovely poetry. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how I sleep at night. Oh. I wonder how you sleep yeah. at night. But you see, wow. that, that, is, that is a possibility. Because, I mean, one of the things with tattoos you've got to be careful about is you can, you can get infectious is it bloodborne diseases like mm. hepatitis if it's not a clean needle so you, you're taking that one step further and actually adding something into it mm. that is going to do the deed Deep. it's going to kill them isn't it that's the thing yeah you know something else i like is when you have an unusual you know weapon or means of delivery or whatever which then turns out to be a decoy or a distraction thinking about like um hercule poirot and um i think at one point um, they discover a blowpipe, and it's in one of the kind of the locked room type. It was in an aeroplane. Death in the clouds. Yes, yes, yeah. Mm. And they they find that, and they're trying to work out how on earth anyone could have used it without noticing. And eventually, I think Hercule Poirot realizes, well, of course they didn't do it. I mean, you know, talk about draw attention to yourself. Yeah. You know, much easier just to put whatever it is. Um, on him, yeah, on the person that yeah. died, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember if it's a Knox's rule or not. You know, when we did the ten rules of oh, detection, I can't remember. And I think he was dead against kind of untraceable poisons yeah. with no, like, you know, you can't, you can't smell them, you can't taste them, you can't see them, whatever, whatever. But we do so. have them now. That's that's mm. that's the thing, you know. Mm. I mean, one of the um, ones, I this is a um, a true one. This was a lady in Texas. Um, she she claimed self defence after she killed her husband by treading on his head twenty five times in stiletto heels. Wow! So uh, he must have been a right bad. And if, uh, if is that was self defence, yeah. twenty five. Yeah. See, it takes some balancing. This is what I'm thinking. You can't yeah. sort of do it in a rage. You've got to sort of 
balance to, to do that sort of damage. But one of the ones that um, has I been... I wonder used... if she practiced, like, trying to, I don't know, walk on a watermelon or something. Yes. You know? Yeah, well... It, Keep it, your balance, like log rolling. Yeah, it, yeah. as I say, it, it sounds... Wow. It doesn't sound easy anyway. No, not But one, one of the things that has been used in detective series, and I'm sure has been used in reality, are the 3D printed gun. Yes. Oh, and weird. when I and I know 3D um, printing is magnificent and it can do all sorts of things because my husband used to use it in his job. Mm. However, when I researched this for this podcast, I was absolutely um, shocked to see that uh, there are kits you can get online. Once you've you know you've printed your gun, you can get the metal bits as kits. Oh. What was that saying? Can only use them once, I think, and but they mm. are easy to destroy because they're plastic. Mm. And if you really wanted to, you could swallow the metal bits. Oof. Yeah, no, but you could. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in theory, you, you know. So uh, mm. that that's a bit um, mm. a bit scary, really. Mm. It is. You do wonder, don't you? We we, we began this uh, episode by talking about the success we were having with those, you know, nearly two thousand views on episode twenty six. And you do wonder if today we're talking about all these gruesome ways of killing people. We just killed off whatever audience. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Mike, uh, people are absolutely fascinated by things like this. Yeah. Unfortunately, I am. So, <laughs> but mm. purely for research, obviously. Oh, of course. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 naturally, yeah. yes. Yeah, so, mm. uh, I, I think. Oh, oh, have you? Either of you got anything else you'd like to I, put I th- forward? I think now we've probably killed enough people or given people enough ideas as to. Uh, what they might do with that uh, frozen leg of lamb. <laughs> yes. <to> stop. <laughs> so if any of you have like a great idea for a short story with an unusual murder weapon, then uh, We'd love our to blog is it. always available it for you indeed. to post. Yeah. So. We're, we're, we're about we're about due to read some uh, um, listeners' stories out, aren't we, Mike? Do you not yes. think? Yeah, I think we, mm. uh, we, we do have one or two people who are joining in with our weekly writing prompt uh, mm. on the blog. So if you haven't done and want to have a look at it, please, uh, please come and visit us. Mm. Yeah, and, and what's that address? Uh, only murders in my mind. Wordpress. Com. Well remembered. Thank you. And it, uh, the, <laughs> Sorry, uh, I put you on the spot there. The writing prompt comes out every Friday, every Friday morning, and yeah. it's a, a picture prompt. Boom! Just inviting you to uh, to write a story. It doesn't have to be murder mystery. Anything you like. Yeah, mm. yeah. Because it sort of narrows our um, our field if we keep it in just to murder mystery yes. yeah, yeah. It, we're, we're interested in anybody that, that wants to write so um, so we'll draw that to uh, um, a close for today um, thank you for listening and thank you for sort of hitting all the buttons on the bottom of the uh, YouTube uh, I think what Carol's trying to say <laughs> is if you could press the like button that would be much appreciated if you leave a comment that'd even be even more appreciated yes and you can subscribe yes. or as Carol says just hit a button yeah, just at all those buttons. Not the off button. No, 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 no. no, no. Not, not, not the off button or the stop button. <laughs> not not the those off. ones. <laughs> the other buttons, yes. <laughs> and we'll be here again at the same time next week. So until then, bye everyone. Bye. You have been listening to Only Murders in My Mind, a Random Thought production, produced by John Bissett. The music in peril was composed and recorded by OM Studio Strings. Thank you.